Hello friends, uh, once again welcome back to the video series on uh, design of steel structural elements. So in the previous video we have seen uh, one basic example on a welded connection design. Now let me move on with the second type of example. Now here a time member of a roof truss consisting of an angle I say 65 by 65 by 6 of uh, FE410 grade steel is welded to a 8 mm thick cassette plate. Right? So uh, you design the weld to transmit a load equal to full strength of the angle member. You have to assume shop welding. Provide only longitudinal weld. So now here, mm, the, now this in this example, he has connected an angle ISA 65 by 65 by 6. Okay, this is an angle connected to the gusset plate, 8 mm thick and the grade of the steel is FE410. You have to design the weld to transmit a load that is this PU equal to the full strength of the angle member and you have to assume shop welding and we need to provide only longitudinal welds. I told in the previous example longitudinal weld I mean to say that you have to provide the weld only in the direction parallel direction parallel to the applied load not perpendicular to the applied load right uh, okay uh, we'll see how to design this one so uh, as i did in the previous example before uh, designing the weld i need to find out for which load for what load how to design my weld so means i need to find the value of this pu and the formula that i gave to find the full strength of the angle member or a solid plate is by this formula TDG is equal to AGFY divided by gamma amount. In the previous uh, video I told that this AG is actually the cross sectional area of the plate. Now here in this case AG will be the cross sectional area of the angle. Now from the steel table you can find out the cross sectional area of the angle ISA 65 by 65 by 6. So I am uh, this is coming out to be 740 multiplied by 250 is the yield strength of the plate divided by the partial safety factor so I am getting TDG equal to 170 kN means I need to design my weld for a load of 170 kN so now I know value of PE, PU that is 170 kN. So the next immediate step should be to assess the size of weld. Now here mm, uh, since it is an angle the maximum size of weld maximum size of weld when I take consider the angle it should be 3 fourth of the thickness of angle so this is coming out to be 4.5 millimeters so the maximum size of weld when I take into consideration angle it is 3 fourth of the thickness of the angle that which is 4.5 and the maximum size of weld when I take the gusset plate into thickness that is gusset plate into consideration it is 8 minus 1.5 so this is coming out to be 6.5 meters. So 4.5 mm should be the size of weld, maximum size of weld when I take angle and it should be 6.5 when I consider plate. So if I go for say 5 mm means I will violate this condition. If I go for 7 mm I will violate this condition. right? So if I go for 4 mm I will not violate both the conditions. So the size of the weld should be always lesser than 4.5 so we'll adopt a suitable size 
so adopt the size of weld as 4mm okay so we'll adopt the size of weld as 4mm so now uh, i know what should be the what is the size of weld so i have to find the length of weld now i have to provide only only the longitudinal weld and not the transverse weld so let me first calculate what is the stress in the weld so the stress in weld is given as fu by root 3 gamma mw so if you is the ultimate tensile strength 410 divided by root 3 and uh, they have told that you have to use the shop weld so i have to go for 1.25 so i am getting this one to be 189.4 newton per millimeter square that is a stri uh, stress in the weld so now uh, what i will do here is I will provide the weld only in the longitudinal direction that is here and some weld here and no weld should be given here so let me call this weld as L1 and let me call this weld as L2 okay now I need to find the values of L1 and L2 now the small change what we have to consider here is I have to design my weld such that the CG of this weld group that is L1 and L2 that is the CG of this L1 length weld and the CG of L2 length weld okay not and the CG of L1 and L2 length weld should match with the line of action of force okay so I will just uh, repeat once again the CG of L1 length weld and L2 length weld put together should match with the line of action of force okay uh, why this is done is uh, there should not be any eccentricity and there should not be any unsymmetrical bending in the angle and all so to take care of that this uh, thing is done but this thing doesn't apply for the, for the plates because the CG of the plate exactly falls at the center so no problem with that but here it will change because the CG of the angle is not similar to that of a plate so here what I will do okay uh, I will do one small thing here I will take okay take moment of okay all forces take moment of all forces about to or heel of the angle okay so let me take about the toe so here this side represents the toe and this side represents the heel okay I am taking moment of all the forces about the toe so let me start that but before starting that you just please concentrate on this figure here this is an angle 65 by 65 by 6 and the CG of the angle lies here so if you see steel tables you will find this value is 18.1 since it is an equal angle so this value will also be equal to 18.1 so it means that so this value is also 18.1 and this value will be 46.9 that is 65 minus 18.1 which is coming out to be 46.9 so we take moment of all the forces about the heel so what I will get so first let me concentrate on this L1 length weld okay right so what is the force force is stress into area so stress is 189.4 the stress in the weld is 189.4 stress multiplied by the area so for the area I should first find out the effective throat thickness that is 0 0.707 times the size of weld this is the effective throat thickness multiplied by the length of weld I don't know what is the value of L1 
so to take to find out the value of l1 only i am doing this exercise so now this total is the stress multiplied by the area okay so this is the stress multiplied by the area which is the force okay so that is the stress multiplied by the area so now force multiplied by the perpendicular distance so i am taking about the toe up to the toe it is 65 So this is force multiplied by perpendicular distance right so plus so if I see this L2 uh, wide so I'm since I'm taking the moment at the toe itself so there will not be any perpendicular distance for this L2 length wide so I can directly write like L2 into 0 so this equal to okay now pu that is the uh, force is 170 into 10 raised to 3 i'm converting that into newtons multiplied by so the perpendicular distance between this load and the toe is 46.9 right so once i solve this the only unknown thing is l1 so once I solve that, I am getting L1 value as 230 millimeters. I got one value as uh, 230 millimeters. Now how to find the value of L2? So here, what uh, alternative thing? What what you can do is now you can take the moment of all the forces about the heel and you can find the remaining value of l2 but instead of that what i will do i will try to find what is the relation between l1 and l2 means uh, i will just explain this here i will just find out what is the total length of weld total length of weld required carry 170 km here I am finding what is the total length of weld required to carry 170 km this is nothing but L1 plus L2 right ok so to find this it is the, the total load is 170 Okay, 170 kilo newton it is so I'm converting that into newtons divided by so the denominator should be the strength of weld for 1 mm length so it is coming out to be L is 1 T E is that is the effective throat thickness is 0 0.707 times 4 multiplied by 410 that is F U divided by root 3 into 1.25 so this I am getting out to be 320 millimeters right so therefore L1 plus L2 is 320 millimeters but I know already the value of L1 so therefore L2 is coming out to be 90 millimeters. Okay. So here I'll just show that part. So this is 90 millimeters and this one is 230 millimeters and of course some end return will be provided which will not be once again considered in the design so this is how we design the weld and here we have designed only the longitudinal weld and uh, uh, we have also seen when there is a case of an angle how to 
take care that the CG of this weld group should match with the line of action of force applied right so we'll see some more few more examples in the next videos thank you bye